Welcome to another Peak Performance Mindset. Today is pretty special. Well, it's not about me. It's about the author of this book, Ian Mills. We'll check this book out. We both got it. The Salesperson's Secret Code. My name is Mark Hunter, the Sales Hunter. I'm the co-host along with Gerhard Schwantner, Selling Power, Sales Conference 3.0, and really the Dean of the Sales Industry serving as our host. Ian, welcome to the conversation. Tell us a little bit about yourself. My name is Ian Mills. I live uh, around about an hour west of London. I've been selling, um, believe it or not, for 40 years. Uh, I started my sales career at age 15. Uh, still very passionate about selling. I've spent the last 20 years advising famous name companies all around the world on how to improve their performance. So, uh, and a lot of that uh, experience, I guess, is uh, manifested itself in the book that we are here to talk about. So there's something that interests me about your book, um, where you say something very interesting where you talk about what is in the mind. And uh, Mark and I, we are really passionate about the mindset because... Sure. We uh, the key to success is having the right mindset, the right skill set, and the right tool set. From your perspective, what role does the mind play in uh, achieving success? In, in, in my opinion, most of the books in the market are about skills and processes and techniques. There is very little out there about the beliefs and the mindsets and the attitudes that we hold that cause us to behave in the way in which we behave and of course it is the behavior that causes us to be the success um, or, the, or to achieve the successes that we uh, desire to, to achieve as top salespeople. So yeah, the mindset is everything. I was speaking uh, to a salesperson just this morning and uh, she told me about uh, some of the anxieties that she experiences when she calls on new prospects. She's totally fine with existing customers. Once the ice is broken, she's fine. But she always gets nervous and has that fear of getting rejected or fear of saying something wrong. Uh, what, what's your advice for people like that? Yeah, and my guidance is that you need to uh, learn how to reframe uh, your belief system. You need to think about the value that you may be able to bring to the table. You need to think about um, the difference you can make to that particular prospect. A couple of years ago, I was talking to a man called Adrian Morehouse. Uh, you, you may or may not know him. He was a gold medal Olympic swimmer. And um, I had the very conversation with him where he was telling me that as he stood at the side of the pool and looked to the left or the right, he was seeing competitors that were bigger than him, more athletic than he was, chests the sizes of gorillas. Um, inevitably, he's a human being. So what is he going to think? He's going to think they're bigger, faster, better. So when he gets in that pool and he feels that his lungs are bursting, he can allow that self-talk to bring him down. And what Adrian Morehouse told me he did is he replaced that negative self-talk with the talk of his coach. So he literally talked to himself while he was swimming using positive affirmation, positive dialogue, repeating the instructions that his coach would have given him had he been in the pool right next to him. So that's just an example of a coping strategy and a mechanism that you can put in place. And look, one of, one of the things that I share with my clients is, is, is what I call the aggregation of marginal gains, you know, which is find a series of small things that when added together will shift you from bronze to silver or silver to gold. There's also a chapter where you write in the book about influence and uh, influence works both ways as we started with influence over ourselves. Now, yeah. talk about the influence we have on other people. What we found from an influence point of view is that the top performers um, had a far greater level of intensity around what we call a gorilla uh, style of behavior, as opposed to a gorilla style of behavior. Um, and the poorer performers tended to adopt more of a gorilla. So if you think about a gorilla, a gorilla is big, um, it's intimidating, um, 
it's arguably quite aggressive, um, as opposed to a gorilla, uh, where they're more agile, more creative, acknowledging that you've got to win uh, the battles in order to win the war. And it's a far more sophisticated, longer term strategic way of influencing. Um, and and at, 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 at the detailed level, we believe that we know what is the optimal balance of the two, because it isn't either or, it isn't black and white. It's about a balance of the two, but the better influences are going to have a greater level of intensity around sophistication. What effectively we've concluded is this is balance between 10 component elements. You know, you might want to look at it like a cake mix. We kind of know what the ingredients are, but the perfect tasting cake has exactly the right mix and blend of the different component parts. Um, so we all know that all salespeople, for example, have a fear of failure. Um, the issue is to what degree does that limit them or to what degree does that liberate them to become more successful? So too much fear of failure is going to be damaging. Too little fear of failure is going to be damaging. So what's the optimal amount? So, you know, you might compare that to sugar in the cake. Yeah. How do you get that just right? So it tastes just good, but it isn't damaging. There's a lot of talk about being real, being authentic, being human, and uh, and there's uh, and, and nobody really defines what does authenticity mean in selling. How, how would you define it? Um, I think it's difficult to define. Um, I believe that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So. Um, you know, the classic dilemma any salesperson faces is that one person likes them and the other doesn't. Uh, someone thinks they're authentic and someone else doesn't. So, I mean, just as an example, I, I, I'm talking tomorrow at the Women in Sales Awards in, uh, in London um, on this very subject. And they want to know what is good sales leadership communication? Well, good communication is finding out what your recipient believes is good communication and giving it to them. So do they want you to be slow? Do they want you to be fast? Do they want you to be serious? Do they want you to be funny? Um, find out what they want and give it to them. So I think authenticity is um, find out what people want and, and try and give it to them. Well, it's interesting. This whole authenticity is really coming up in, yeah. in the news in so many different ways. And what I find absolutely interesting is salespeople can be quick to say they're authentic. And the yeah. person who says they're authentic is not. Yeah. You know, it's like the person who says they're a great salesperson mm -hmm. is not. It yeah. really needs to come out in their actions. So how does authenticity come out in your actions? In, in my opinion, it is um, about humility. Uh, it's about being real. It's about making mistakes. Um, it's about being honest. Um, it's about being a normal person. Let's talk more about leadership because uh, you are about to give a talk on, on that subject and leadership styles. And in your book, uh, you, you sort of uh, unpack the abilities that leaders uh, need to develop. Um, what is the role of vision in leadership? If I may, just to give a bit of context, uh, when I talk about leadership, I'm talking about mid-level leadership. So sales managers, sales leaders. Um, I think their job is to be the, in part the bridge between the strategy of the organization and the reality of what salespeople face day to day. So at one level, they are the empathizer, the motivator, the reality check as, as they look downwards. Um, and then as they look upwards, they are the interface between the customers and the salespeople and the strategy people in headquarters. Um, so, so I think it's, it, it's about being a conduit. Um, it's about being a Machelian. It's about being able to interpret complexity into reality. That's really the, you know, if we think about peak performance, peak right. performance is about how do we as a manager, and, and I hate the term manager, leader, get more out of the people I have the privilege of leading. 
And in order for me to do that, there's a quote that Ian has in his book that I want to share. Great communication is about getting your message across clearly and succinctly. And, you know, you stop and think about that. How many sales managers, I'll use the negative term, are not effective because they can't communicate clearly and succinctly with those they're leading. And if we can't do that piece right, there's no way we're gonna be able to have the impact. You know, I look at leadership as a real gift. It, it's a gift not that we're given, but it's a gift that we get to really share with others. What I like about the book, it's, um... It's substantive and uh, it's research-based and it's very empirical. Uh, so there are, there are a lot of, of uh, you know, and, and the title is right. It's a secret code uh, because the, the basics of selling are really a, a well-kept secret. Uh, Mark, what's the take? Well, yeah. And, and, and I think what you just said about the book is so real. It's research-based. There are so many books out today that are just opinion-based. Right. And opinions that can be. But I want to come back to that whole thing of what you what you were talking about there in terms of the sales piece. There is a secret code. And the secret code is not caught up in the science, but it really is in the art. And it starts with how do we communicate? So, yeah, I think I think without a doubt. And, and, and you know, what's interesting is the secret code. It, <laughs> It's not so secret. It's just we don't want to believe it. We just don't want to believe it. And I think, Ian, that's what you really unpack in your book, that you can believe it. Many people, as we know, regardless of whether it is sales, are change resistant. Um, yeah, uh, it's human nature to uh, not want to do things differently, not to reinvent yourself. And um, you know, frankly, the world in which we all operate is getting more complicated, more demanding. Um, I use this phrase called the VUCA world, the volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous world. Well, you know, if you are a salesperson, a sales leader, um, going forward, you've got to be able to operate in that environment. And whoever you are and whatever your track record is, you've got to up your game. So being more curious, being more uh, learning orientated, being more passionate about uh, professionalizing what it is you do is, is essential. So, so a very simple belief um, that, that I think every salesperson and sales leader should hold is that the world is becoming VUCA. Uh, because if they really hold that belief, they will go on a journey of learning developing, studying, um, professionalizing, yet speaking to people who've been there and been successful and finding out how they do it and why they do it and what it is that means that they're top performers. Share with us again, what, what was the acronym? VUCA, V-U-C-A, Volatile, Uncertain, Complex and Ambiguous. And that's the world we all operate in. I think part of our difficulty with uh, changing and growing is that uh, from a mindset perspective, when new knowledge comes in, we are eager learners. We read a lot of books. Uh, we go to a lot of conferences. We talk to a lot of smart people. But every time we have a new layer of knowledge, that knowledge is creating a groove in our brain. It fills that groove with content. So when new content comes in that looks similar to what we already know, then we gloss over and say, we already know that. And accidentally, we remain ignorant because we don't examine everything thoroughly. So once we have a layer of knowledge about, let's say, psychology or communication or leadership, or selling skills and how to close, then we have the illusion, we know it. And that illusion of knowing uh, perpetuates our ignorance. Uh, I, I, I couldn't agree more. And I, 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 um, I quite often say to my clients that the single attribute that leaders and salespeople are least good at is the ability and willingness to listen. Um, on the other hand, if I were to go to them and ask them to spend lots of money with me to coach their people to listen, ah, they've been there, done that, they're perfect at it. Well, no, they're not, you know, to your point. Yeah, they think they are, but 
you know, and, and, and you know, I put my hand in the air. I'm not world class at listening. Um, but what we know is that clients and customers want sales professionals to listen. What do you do yourself to uh, keep your mind sharp? Do you uh, exercise? Do you follow a special diet? Do you do yoga or uh, meditation? Or how do you keep your mind in great shape? I do a lot of learning. Uh, I do a lot of reading. Not many books. I tend to read articles, HBR articles, uh, articles on LinkedIn, uh, uh, short videos. Uh, I'm an avid TED Talk uh, viewer. Um, so I soak it up, um, and I, 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 I don't um, put it in my schedule for a specific allocated time. It tends to be if I'm in in the evening, I'll spend an hour and a half doing that stuff. Uh, over a year, I do a lot of it. Would you call yourself a short form learner or a long form learner? And the reason I bring this up is because there's this really debate that's raging that you can gain all the knowledge you need by just doing research on the internet. And then there's the other school of thought that says, no, no, if you really want to do learning, you got to do deep learning, long form reading, and that's really books. Um, what, what, what's your take? Because clearly you've seen the world, you've seen it out there. Um, I think it's a bit of all. Uh, so uh, I'm not trying to sit on the fence, but I think um, learners need different experiences. So if I was advising a client, I would be saying, you know, if you really want to change performance, it may take you three years to get to where you want to get to. During that three years, you've got to view videos, you've got to attend seminars, you've got to get a coach, you've got to uh, learn on the job, you've got to set yourself challenges. So I think it's a rich blend of different experiences that, that are most likely to get you to the, uh, the destination. Um, so, so generally reading is about acquiring knowledge. Um, uh, I think there's nothing better than getting around tables with like-minded individuals to share, discuss, experiment. Uh, you can't really do that online quite in the way that you can do it face to face. But I don't believe face to face events, conferences will ever go away. You know, I mentioned this women in sales awards. I will be in a room with a hundred women tomorrow. Okay, how cool is that? Um, uh, they could do that technically on a virtual basis, but it won't be the same. Yeah, they'll be at a beautiful hotel, they'll be having lunch, they'll be networking, they'll be creating opportunities that would not happen if it was online. What was the biggest adversity you had to overcome and what did you learn from it? My biggest adversity is I left school when I was 16 without any qualifications. Yeah. Um, now, by the way, I didn't see it as an adversity. Um, I thought it was fantastic um, because I didn't enjoy the world of education. So um, I started selling, as I said earlier, at age 15 before I'd left school. I, I very quickly uh, became quite successful in that world. Um, so so I, I suppose as I look back, I call that adversity. Um, it probably it probably wasn't really. It was the best thing that could have ever happened to me. I also like to get your perspective on where you see um, the science of selling has gone uh, in the United States from a British perspective. There's a cult significant cultural difference. Attitudinally, more people in the U.S. see selling as a profession, something to be proud about, something to. Uh, aspire to be good at. It's a sweeping generalization, but to a greater extent in the UK, um, people go into sales because they couldn't get themselves a proper job. Mm. Um, and quite often their ambition is to move out of sales quite quickly. Um, you might meet a group of salespeople and ask them what their ambition is, and their immediate answer is to become a manager. And they mean a manager at anything. Um, so I think. Um, in simple terms, you see it as more of a profession uh, and are more passionate about it, whereas the Brits are, are less passionate about selling as a profession. They're less proud about it. They are unlikely to talk about it at, at a dinner party. I know it's a sweeping generalisation. Um, on the other hand, uh, what I would say is that when I've worked in the US, I've been received incredibly well. A lot of Americans like the Brits. So 
so you know I've spoken at events and ran workshops um, and it's worked incredibly well so my opinion is we can learn from each other I got one quick yeah. question what's the big takeaway you want people to have after they read the book what our hope would be is it will open their minds to the art of the possible um, it will provoke them to uh, almost as I said a moment ago um, uh, become more curious uh, uh, self-develop uh, aspire to achieve things they never imagined they would achieve so begin to go on a journey that's what we would hope from reading the book well and, and my takeaway is the that sacred quote that's spelled out in the book um, okay. and, thank you uh, that is um, a, a great way to focus the mind and uh, become aware of which direction you want to grow in and uh, it, it's all about to me the the world is very chaotic and our main job is to integrate all the parts so we don't feel fragmented so we reach that state of wholeness which goes back to authenticity that uh, customers want where uh, customers look to you for guidance and and for your leadership we, you know, we, we are not the answer to all things. We are a part of the puzzle. Um, so, you know, I think it's about adding it all together, joining the dots and uh, upping the game of this world of selling. Is there a website where people can go to to find you in Europe? The best web website, in my opinion, is transformperformance.com. Anyone can reach me on LinkedIn. So it's Ian Mills. Uh, so search on Ian Mills and Transform Performance and you will find me. I will link to anyone in the world of selling. Um, and I can point people at uh, assets, videos, and frankly, whatever, you know, whatever, they, whatever they might want.